The Fire Store, equipping protectors with passion. Every decision the Fire Store makes as a company is about its customers. As the holiday season has quickly approached, explore a wide selection of unique and practical gifts at the Fire Store's gift center. Find the perfect presence for firefighters, EMTs, and first responders today. The Fire Store's goal is to get you the gear you need when you need it at prices you can afford. Visit thefirestore.com for everything but the truck and shop its family of brands including Streamlight, MSA, Lion, Fleer, and more. Breathing in diesel exhaust fumes is like walking into a fire without a mask. Over time, those toxins lead to cancer. Protect yourself with MagnaGrip the easiest, most reliable exhaust removal system that features a true 100% seal to eliminate diesel exhaust fumes. To get free grant assistance, visit magnagrip.com. IFSTA is dedicated to advancing firefighting techniques and safety through the creation of our manuals, instructor resources, and student study materials. Our high-quality, technically accurate, and affordable training content has made us a fire service leader. Visit us at ifsta.org for more information. I've been told by everybody up on this roof that they're all off the roof. I am on the roof of exposure 4. Got to fire through the roof of the fire building in the entire rear section. Now remember, given the payday, as if it accounted for, okay? 6.0B, that was the payday, 6.0B. I'm out here, we got a fire. One and a half story, single family dwelling, fire shown from the second floor, give me a second alarm on this. See up there, top floor, I got people hanging out the top floor windows with a baby. Commercial building, uh, a lot of fire, a lot of smoke, go ahead and strike a third alarm on my orders on this. Got people on the front fire escape here with windows circuit below them, we need somebody up there. Yeah, let them know we got a job, I'm pulling up. Second alarm, I got a one-story single-family frame, heavy fire showing from the attic. So we use it all here, we got one line stretch, fire on the fourth floor, second line being stretched, primary switches are underway. Hey, welcome back to our Fire Engineering Podcast, The Command Post. I'm Chief Rick Lasky, along with my good buddy Chief John Salka, and uh, we're all dialed in, ready for FDIC come April. Um, we're hoping that you had a great Thanksgiving, and getting ready for Christmas, and Hanukkah, all the other holidays. everything yep. else. Yeah, everything mm -hmm. else that you need to celebrate and just, uh, you know, life short. We were just talking about that a little while ago after class. And, you know, I think sometimes we forget to enjoy what we're doing. And you've got 159 people running around your house between grandkids and, and sons and daughters-in-laws and 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 uh, daughters and, and same thing. And, uh, God, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I wouldn't trade it for the it's world. It's fun. It's great. Nine people in the house. Three grandchildren, uh, three of my own kids, and, and a daughter-in-law, and uh, it, we're, we're having a wonderful time. It's a little change from what we've been doing the last couple of years, which has just been and Dawn and I and Colleen, three of us. But uh, as you said, it's uh, it's great. It's interesting. It's fun. Keeps us busy, and we're having a, we're having a great time. Well, and and look, we uh, last week um, we were we were with uh, our good friends down in Northport, Florida. Um, uh, Northport's in Sarasota County. I've been down here before for them on the Gulf Coast, and, right? And and, and what, what's fun is what I tell you. I told you, you know when we sign up to do classes together, we get together. I go, you're you're gonna love these guys. You are going to. First of all, how about the chief? Let's talk about the boss yep. first. Yep, great guy. Oh, great. Who gets it? Like you said, dialed in, in touch with what everybody's doing and what everybody's wanting to do, and 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 his own people. Uh, you know, and his community had great conversations with him down there. He's been there for the class, you know, every day. And it's just great having not just the folks, not just the officers, but sometimes the staff and the chief and, you know, others in the department that run the department hanging, you know, benefiting from the class. And even just the fact that they're there seeing what what, what they're paying for, seeing, oh. you know, who, who they hired and what, and what they produce. And most of the time they're as happy with the class as we are. And Scott, one of the assistant chiefs, and then, you know, we, we did we did the meet and greet and everything, and then there was there was a bunch of other departments down there. You know, some uh, some people right right nearby. You know, one or two departments away, and some people a little bit further away. But uh, yeah, a very nice, very nice collection of of different departments and different types of people, and and they were all and like you always not not my turn, but yours dialed in. They were all dialed <laughs> in. We get you know the whole. I think every every seat in the classroom was full oh, inside yeah. the firehouse, inside the firehouse class in the training room, great training room. And uh, absolute attention of everybody all day long, all day long. Everybody was wide-eyed and paid attention and answering questions. And, you know, 
you and I get a, a we get a kick out of everybody being connected and, and paying attention to what's going on. Sometimes you and and if you remember, the first thing I said the first morning was, uh, let's go crowd. You guys are gonna have to get a little bit more connected to what's going on here. We, we asked the question three times and four guys answered. Okay. They didn't and have their coffee yet. 60, 60 <laughs> people in the room. So let, and, and by the end of the day, day one, it was, you know, it was a sideshow. Well, the guys were all great. And it was, I mean, how lucky were you the week before this? That, that you know, this particular we were talking about, we were in Los Alamos, New Mexico with another great group, a great chief, a great doing class. that same program. Oh. With a different group was almost a different show. It know? was there, and then the, and then we, we end up in Northport, Florida, with another great group. And then I went to Illinois to visit with our great buddy Jeff Bryant with at Amboy, Illinois. We love that's like our other family. Great guy, yeah, they're great, great guys. guys. Yeah. Yep. And then you know, for me, uh, and then right after that, going to Palm Beach County, Palm Beach County Fire Rescue. Oh, you're a better Fools. man than me. <laughs> and the Palm Beach County Fools, which. You talk about a fool's group that gets it. So just, just, it's just a great, great few weeks getting out there visiting and talking with people and, and, and doing our, our doing our stuff that we love doing. And doing out. one of our favorite programs. One of our favorite programs is the company officer Academy. It's a great three day program. And, you know, three days is long for an instructor go to one place and, you know, be there, whether we're there individually or, or, or together or partially, which we do sometimes as well. But, the three-day program is great. It covers so many great topics, and guys just come up to us afterwards. And we're not blowing smoke here, but guys come up and say, "Wow, this! I, I wish I'd have done this last year, or two years ago, or five years ago, or wherever it was." Or the guys come up and say, "I feel so much more prepared now, you know, to take that test or to get into the process to to, to be an officer." Exactly. So, which is co quite coincidentally what what we're going to talk well, about. Well, let, let's talk about that. You and I talked about it right before <laughs> going going you know going into recording here was, you know, about we're doing all these leadership programs about company officers and chief officers. And, you know, in Los Alamos, I met with all the chiefs and the chiefs were, you know, the rest of the state. Mm -hmm. And then we did the company officer Academy. And that question comes up. We actually bring it up, right? We, at the beginning of class, don't we do it? We go, okay, we've done this for the longest time. We say, okay, so how many people are a Lieutenant or higher? Okay. Let's go back in time. When you made that first jump to company officer was Lieutenant or captain. What class did they send you right, to? Right. And all we get is smiles and giggles, right? Before they never let you ride the front seat. What did they do, you know, to prepare you for the role? And then from there, you know, whether it was lieutenant to captain, captain to, to battalion chief, to assistant to chief of department. And and I think we do ourselves a disservice. You and I both love the fire service. We 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 you always say, you always say this, you always go. It's we have the honor of hanging with the coolest people yep. and we get to go to dinner and visit, talk shop and everything else. It's never cumbersome. It's always a ball. We get to see firehouses and that. But then you start thinking, you know, we we have a lot of guys, right, that come up in class, go, you know what? I, I'm not trying to whine here, Chief Salka or Chief Lasky, but no one prepared me for this. Right. Nobody, you know, you know, so then you start looking at things like when we when we look at line of duty and stuff, we look at what happened, what led up to it. And then you go back. Okay, let's let's let you know we 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 know what happened responding to getting there and how we lost that firefighter. But we have to look back before the the to they even drop the tones and say, what were they doing training wise? What were they doing to prepare them wise? You know, did did this guy or gal get jammed up because right, so they have SOPs, that they have written yeah, policies and, on and, stuff and and maybe they didn't do their due diligence when it came to training them in that in SCBA emergencies and stuff like that. So same thing when it comes to officers, right? It's like we, you and I sit there and we get to ask people, so tell us about your process, both volunteer. Well, uh, actually, let's talk volunteer career. We, we both do both. So let's talk about right. your process. There's more volunteer fire departments and more volunteer firefighters than pay. You know, obviously the paid people cover more of the, cover more of the population in the country and, and volunteers probably cover more of the geographical area, but, the, but they both cover gigantic segments of our society. And, you know, whether you're in a, and, and, and we know, like you are to Long Island and, and, and upstate New York, there are volunteer fire departments that have three and four or five stations that have a couple of hundred members. And, you know, nobody, nobody's making a dime, you know, and, 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 and they are the fire department. They're not the auxiliary fire department. They are the fire department. Now, then you got career departments, some as small as one or two stations, and then, you know, media size, gigantic paid, paid fire departments. There are so many different departments around the country. And then you do regions, north and south and east and west, and how officers are selected, how you end up to become a first-line supervisor, because that's the initial, right? That's the initial change from, from working and firefighter. Isn't that not the biggest jump going from firefighter to company From officer. buddy to boss, right? And there's books written on that. There's seminars on that. Obviously, a lot of what we talk about in our company officer academy is focused on that. So 
<clears throat> so the process is important. Hopefully those of you that are listening uh, tonight might be able to take some of the stuff. And I realize most fire departments, whether you're career or volunteer, most of these processes are written in stone. Most, you know, the volunteer fire department might be in the bylaws about how officers are selected. And in a career department, it might be a civil service civil well, service let's position. Start, let me, let's just jump here for a second, because you did it last week. Well, last week when we were in Florida, Northport, we talked about there and in Los Alamos. Talk about, let's talk about, let's zero in on the FDNY, your heritage, besides right. being a volunteer. <laughs> and I always bring up the process and go, John, explain to them, like, how high is the stack of books, policies, and right. so you have right. to review for a, how many question tests would how so so let's go back up for a lieutenant any given time right. guesstimate what would you guess it'd be how many people would be testing for lieutenant? Oh, thousands could be four or five or or even more for how many potential promotions you know, hundreds it could be six hundred it could be seven hundred people on the list you know and it doesn't mean that there's seven hundred spots that get filled because some fill over the course of a four year list some spots get filled and then people retire again and so but it, but it still could be there, there are people that are in the in the seven hundreds on the lieutenant's list. That get promoted. So what do you have to do to qualify to take the lieutenant's test in the FTNY? Right. right. So obviously there's a, there's a time and rank, meaning there's a time on the job, right? I remember my son Brian was on uh, North Charleston, and then, then he was on a job out, out in uh, Wichita. And both of them had like a three-year, and one of them had recently switched to a five-year. That might might even be Wichita, but it, but, but it doesn't matter. So some career departments, you have to have serve in the job. As a firefighter, some places you have to be first grade. Again, those numbers vary from three to four to five years. But usually they're around there. And once you make that, once you achieve that that time on the job, that seniority, then the next lieutenant that comes up, when they announce it, a test announcement comes up, for, uh, you know, FDNY announces lieutenant's exam scheduled for, like, this month, next year, on this date. And they even send out in the FDNY bibliography, they say, you know, questions will come from the following, and then they list just about everything we have written. And like you just said, it's thousands and thousands, I must say, ten thousands of pages. I mean, if you were standing next to the pile of three ring binders, it would probably come up to your waist. And I'm telling you, big three and four and five inch binders, you know, safety bulletins is one binder. Firefighter procedures, engines operations, firefighter procedures, multiple dwellings, firefighter procedures, private dwellings. It goes on and on. Never mind PAIDs, personnel and administrative information directives. And then that's all about vacations and, and, and time and overtime and all those administrative things that you have to figure out. And you had to know all of it. Uh, in more recent years, we did an in-basket. So not so, so much too much stuff. Generally, it's been a hundred question test. There so when, times you start, when do you start? You said this. You have to have so many years. So let's say. So a group of firefighters. When do you start studying? Though? Right. A group do you of wait firefighters. Until you qualify or do you no, start not at all. Guys that are hungry, guys that are hot to get promoted. Well, I have to tell you, my, you know, the friends in my group, you know, Ralph Fago and, and, and Billy Byer and, and Jay Jonas and myself and others, you know, um, we, we had, a, we had a, a great study group, which is even a smaller group. Guys join these paid, these big companies that pay in. A couple of assistant chiefs run them. I ended up running one of these companies myself for a couple of years. And, uh, you know, you pay a couple hundred bucks for a semester and you go to a weekly class that's run by, you know, a successful fire officer, whether it be a battalion or a deputy chief. And they and they give you civil service formatted questions and you, you come into the class and you collect, you, you know, you get this 40 or 50 question book. You sit down, and you answer them. And then the instructor takes over and says, OK, let's go over it. And he goes over one question at a time. He gives you the correct answer and he corrects the three that are incorrect, if that's possible. Most of the time they are. Right. My, my point is. And then some guys, like my group, we went further. We had five or six or seven guys in a study group, and we would meet up around our homes. We all lived around the same area, either in a volunteer firehouse or at the library or at somebody's uh, uh, home in the dining room, and we would have our own little study. So we'd have two study study sort of like programs that we were going through, along with reading about four hours or longer every time you went to work at the well, firehouse, you'd find something. And I remember Donnie Haid, our good friend, Don, yeah, we love Donnie Haid, reti retired in the rescue battalion. Squad one captain, busiest, another guy like you, busiest companies. I remember Donnie saying, when I passed the lieutenant's exam, I gave myself about a month and I started studying for the captain's exam. He goes, I wasn't even a lieutenant yet. And I switched gears. He goes, now I didn't forego and say, okay, now I don't have to study, be, be a lieutenant. Right. He goes, I still kept those, that knowledge base up. Yeah. He goes, and, and it probably happened because in the long term, in the big picture, you can see, you know what, the captain's test, the captain's list has been going for two and a half, almost three years. There's only a year left in the captain's exam. They're going to come out a year from now with a thing saying, 
a captain's test is scheduled for a year from now. So that means it's two years away. Guess what? You got to study two years. So you could pretty much do some long-term planning. But but what but I want to get into with the FDNY is so so what's the criteria? So obviously it changed over the years. There were times where I think one time many years ago they had an interview or some type of a verbal thing. Not very common. Only happened once or twice. Sometimes they have in basket, and those are still multiple choice questions on paper in front of you. But you'll have a but you'll have a, a packet of documents that are filled out, and then they'll ask you a multiple choice question. Question number ninety to one hundred are based on the, the documents in the document packet. So it would say for the medical leave report, which of the following things is true, and then they'll they'll they ask you about something filled out correctly or incorrectly, which you had to know. So you're studying forms and entries and things like that. The bottom line is you get a hundred question test. Each question each question is worth one point, and whatever your mark is, your mark is. So. Here's what the FDMY does that I think is absolutely wonderful. And I suffered from it and I benefited from it both. Seniority. Seniority in the FDMY generally counts for, and it varies from test to test, but generally counts for 50%. So how if, much? 50% of your mark. So, so your written mark, you write a 90. You get 90 questions right, you got a 90. But now we look at your seniority, and that's not changeable. Now we look at your seniority. You got 15 years in right, 10 years of full seniority. So now whatever your mark is, it gets averaged with an 85. So if you wrote a 90 and it gets averaged with an 85, your mark is actually going to get lower a little bit. It's going to be like an 87. Ooh. And that and that's where you go, where the 87 is. But if but if you're a bop, if you're some young guy that that did the three years in rank, three years on the job, started studying, two years later, you have five years, your seniority mark is going to be a 75. You could write a 95. A 95, and your your mark's going to be 85. It's going to get brought down 10, 10 points because it's a 20-point differential there. So we're going to average, you know, your seniority mark, which is 75, your written mark, which is 95, it comes right down to the middle, 85. So you're theoretically two points behind a guy that, that's got all the time on the job. And I think it's wonderful. I think seniority, I think points for seniority is a wonderful thing. because As my long as it's is, not solely... No, the it's 50-50. Because there are places that promote solely on seniority. And, and that's another kind, problem. Because you could have a guy the best. You could have a guy that really is an awesome material that's got seniority. That shouldn't qualify him. And I think the mixture of technical knowledge, answering questions correctly, and your seniority like being that. blended like makes it makes it makes I it like nice. that blend because you can't do you know it's it's also all the all the professional test takers for those departments do well. And don't have a clue actually what they're doing on the line. Then you've got the guys that are strictly seniority that don't have anything to match up. Like you said, they've just been hanging over it. So now you do, you take both. You take seniority. It's yeah. a blend of technical yes. knowledge and experience. So no, no college so educated, really sharp guy is going to be at the top of the list if he's a Johnny. If so he's seniority enough. counts for something. I like that. And there were times in my career, there were times when the seniority was given more than 50%. It was 70-30 for seniority. So depending on who the chief of department is and the civil service people, and you know, they, they announced that with the test announcement. So you, it's not a surprise. You don't find out the day of the test, but however it is, they do what they do it. But I like the blend that I think a big city oh. like New York city, that thousands of people are competing for hundreds of jobs works out really well. Oh, and, yeah. I, and I like that. I like, I've never liked just the one or the other, right. you know, like when I got to Louisville, I was going to ask you great, what'd you do great city. Here? Great. When I first got there, so what they did was they had the uh, three captain's positions open. So everybody was allowed that was that had the time and rank to be able for, as driver engineers. So you have to have so much time as a firefighter, a few years, then you could test to be a driver engineer, which is a rank. Then from there to be a captain. So okay. so you couldn't be an officer without being a driver engineer. Right. Okay. It, it, they got rid of the lieutenant's position and they kind of made the driver engineers attested when the captain's off, you act up as officer, blah, blah, blah. So they had three openings. So that so after everybody took the written for captain. They so whatever if you have three if you have one opening, they go three. If it's three openings, they went nine. So they only they took nine. You could have a ninety four and be number ten after taking the written, and you were allowed to progress just nine guys, triple them out. Oh, so all they did was take the top grades based on how many openings they were. Yes. So if if it, it real like I'm at the best at math, I went to public school. But if it's one, then they allow three people to progress. If it's three. They allowed nine. So, so we, my question is, what's the difference? Why, why wouldn't you let 29 people well, be on the list? And, the same the same nine would be at the top, wouldn't th they? Yes, and this was my whole point. We're stifling 
people's learning the, the process. I said, I, you know, whether it's a seven zero, this is what I did. I said, I, we added, we added like to the, to the caps, we added the, you know, the in baskets, the tactical assessment, SOPSG. We had an outside firm even write it for us. Right. So nobody could and say, that's great. Right. You know, we did that and, and, and got that all done. And what it was, was, you know, you had to, you had to pass all that stuff and your totals, when they average all those different components, I said this, there needs to be a 70.0 for you to make the list. Now, almost we, every test I've ever heard of for promotion anywhere has been a 70. Right. And we know we one. can't post your, you can't post your grade. You can't post, but you can post the rank, but you can't post grades. The Family, Family Privacy and Education Act protects people with different stuff like that. Can't do social security numbers. Can't do, you know, you have to have an ID number. Like you sit and Lewis will take the exam. When you sit down, you get a, a secret envelope that has your number. You're the only the HR don't even know your number. So that could be published. All those numbers yeah. with grades next to them and list numbers, and only you would know that you're number one. The, the testing company doesn't know that it's John Salka's tester grade. They right, don't know, right. and HR doesn't. Now, when they get everything graded and send it back to you, HR goes, oh, so number 33 is John Salka, but they don't post your grade. They just post where you land, like if you're number eight, nine, or whatever. That's You could do that. So that being said, you know, that being said, I, what I was upset about, I go, we're only, so the guy that's, and this is what happened. The guy scored like a 96, whatever, on the written, but he was number 10. So and because we only had three cast positions, which nine, I go, that's not right. So the guy got a 96 and he can't progress through the process. And, he qualify. and I go, if we want people to get better, they should have to take the whole process. And you know what? If you get a 69, you don't make the list. A guy with a 70.0 is, I'm just gonna say it is never gonna get promoted. All right. That's not gonna happen. But but it, it doesn't really, I mean, I don't think you lose the energy when people want to get better each time. Especially know. when people put some time in, like guys in the FDNY, and I know few others do what we do. Guys literally put two sometimes, especially for the first promotion, the lieutenant. Guys put two and three years well, and literally thousands of hours well, and, of and i was blessed that louisville have a great city manager had a great human resource department and they said okay let's talk about it and i said i think i think we need my boss what i you know when i went to work there he says here's your three goals your three goals i want the confidence reestablished between fire and man and troops i want a fair i want a fair and and an object, objective display system and i want a fair objective and attainable promotional process i go that's done. easy done but we're not going to do that by only taking the test takers and moving forward. Give So anyway, we did that and I saw, you know what it got to be? So we back it up. We started the positional line of sight mentoring where you've heard me talk about everybody is trained to the next position. Right, for the next position. So above them. Yeah. John Salka came from uh, uh, wherever, Eastville, and he was there four years and all that stuff. And he's like, like got a, a year and a half on now or a year. And, it, you know, the BC's making rounds and the cab says, hey, Chief, I think John Salka is ready to start acting up as a driver. Really? Okay. Well, we just, we did a whole process. It, it, you can, to our listeners, you can email, you know, Lewis will talk to Assistant Chief Terry McGrath, and they'll send you the process. So you take a written that's generated, our test generator generated, the same books that you would take for driver operator, except different questions. You take that, you get an 80 on that. Once you get an 80 on the written, you go to the train field, you do the, you do the driving course. And you have to get an 80 on that. If you get an 80 at the driving course. But you're being instructed and trained on it. It's not just a test. Right. You're trained on the driving yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You go practice it as much as you want. And it's the same driving course for the actual promotion exam. So the written is the same books, but different questions. So you get an 80 on that. Now you go, okay, next step, John, go to the training field. You go there and you do the driving course. You have to get an 80, which 80 is like. The lowest that means you ran over like seven people in wheelchairs, 45 children, and all that stuff, but it's passing for like the driving people. And then once you pass that with an 80, you go to the progressive pumping evolution. There's questions and pump you have to start with pull up and, and charge across with tank water, make your hydrant before you run out of water. Then all of a sudden they pull a two and a half, you're pumping the inch three quarter, two and two and a half, you have average line. Then the last thing is the deck gun, and they're throwing questions at you. And once you pass all that. The assist chief operations takes all your passing scores, looks at your performance evaluations, and goes, you know, John Slok is ready to start acting out of class as a driver. Boom, boom, the paper trail's established. We've got something that covers us. You're good to go. And your name goes on vacation, you can fill it. And, then, and, then, and boom, and you make the money. So boom, now, a couple of years go by. 
Hey, Chief, I think I think uh, engineer John Salk is ready to start acting up as a company officer, as a captain. Really? John, yeah. You take your written, same books, different questions. You do your tactical assessment, but your tactical assessment is more front seat. You turn the corner, you know, company officer stuff. You do your in-baskets, and your in-baskets are more station stuff. And then your SOGs, SOPs, and you pass all those with 80, 80, 80. And then assistant operations looks at that, and your your evals and says good. It's not difficult, but it's complex and it's diverse. But it's but it's the same. Now what happens is, uh, let me back up for a second. What happens is guys that go, I ain't never taking a driver exam. Well, you don't have a choice. Call other duties assigned. Every other duty, everybody has to do it. Other duties is assigned. So what happens is, Rick Lassie goes, you know, you, John goes, hey, you going to take the exam this time? You know what? I, ne- I never wanted to, but how? I, I just passed the written out of the same. I'm bus. all trained up now. Why not do it? I just passed the same driving course, the same pumping. Why not? So all of a sudden we start seeing guys that never want to promote the attempt to, you know, go through the process. And the same thing for officers. Then you're a captain. Hey, you know, Chief, Chief Jones, what I think Captain Salka is ready to start acting up as a battalion chief. You take your written, all right, all right, you know, you take your written, and then you do your your tactical assessment. Now it's extra alarm, big fire stuff. And multiple companies, blah, blah, blah. And then you take your in-baskets, which now it's more shift stuff, big like right. problems. And then you're asking, and then the, the last thing we stole this from you is, you know, from FDOI, you have to go ride three to uh, three to five shifts with the BC. You start a backseat, you drive. We have captains that drive the BC. So it's like, hey, Cap Salka, you go ride engine five, let him come drive. And, and then all that. And it, we do that for, uh, you know me, when I had Tim and Daryl, I told my boss, good luck picking one of them two to be your next right. year. Right. That was my goal. So we had that program in place to do that. But everybody can go practice driving course. Everybody can go practice the pumping for you, all those different things. So we've got that. Pro- but a lot of people don't do that. Now, in my Pride and Ownership book, there's a chapter chapter regarding promotions called, the, t- the title chapter is Changing Shirts, the Promotion. Because some guys, they, they've they been playing the role. They've been the acting artist. They took it serious. They've been studying, doing everything. Before they before they even eligible, they were they were into the books. And and then when they get promoted, they walk and they go, oh, look, look at the new Lieutenant Salka. Oh, look at you. Ha, ha, ha. Aren't you look cool? And that, after that, it's done. Yep. It's business. Yep. Or you have the village idiot that's been asleep in a recliner for four years. And he wakes up and hits himself like the mosquito on him going, oh, when did they pin these collar pins on? You know, so that you, you start. So I, my whole point was, and I, that's why I asked about the FDY, when do you start preparing? I tell people, prepare to promote early in your career. Now, don't be the rookie that's already thinking about being a company officer. But as you progress, you, the first time you crack the binder, I think I told you this in class, guys that come in, hey, chief, do you know when you're going to post the dates for the captain's exam? Yeah, next month. Okay, because I want to start studying and my question is why the, the, the references have been posted for several years. The only thing changes the editions. Right. And if we do add a different book or different reference, it's everybody knows it. And ours might not be posted, but you could go back and look back in the department orders four years back earlier and see what they posted for the lieutenant for the past month. Notes, should your books have like dog ears and highlighters and little red and yellow stickers and stuff, right? When you actually start to read, okay, it's coming up. It should be the first time you crack right. a binder on the book. Right. You should have already been dialed in and doing that. So, so we talked about so far. We talked about when you should start preparing, and I'm always one you should be thinking ahead. Right. Now, some guys just go, you know, what? I never thought about it. I'm ready. Some guys file, good. don't study too much. They read for like a month before the test. And some senior guys do that in the FDMY. Senior guy, 15 years on a job, studies for two months before the test. There's the students that have been studying for two years. What should I look at? Uh, just look at this and this for now. If you don't, you know, and some of them do reasonably well. They pass, and then they're and then they're ninety five, and then they're and, high and, mark. And those are the guys that buy the one lottery ticket. That's I right. bought one, and I won the lottery. Right. But but, but what I wanted to talk but, about next was obviously we talked about Louisville, we talked about FDNY, and there's probably a lot of other career paid departments just like that or, or similar. What about for those of you that are volunteer firefighters? I wrote an article years ago. The title so of the article was the, the boss. selection processes. Who's the boss. Yeah. How do you pick? How do you pick company officers? For, certainly, the first level, whether it be captains or lieutenants, in a volunteer department, whether it's a big, whether it's a big multi-station, well-organized, well-funded fire department like out of Long Island or upstate New York or many other places, or whether it's a small volunteer fire department like like I'm a member of South Bloomington Grove in Orange County. We have one station. We get two engines and a quint and a rescue and a brush truck and 
you know, every year we have an election and, and, you know, guys run for Lieutenant guy, one guy runs for captain, you know, three guys run for the three chiefs positions. There's a limit. The chief has a limit, a term limit of three years. He can only run three times and then he has to leave and then everybody moves up. And then the captain moves up to the bottom chief position. Then there's obviously a company officer opening one of the lieutenants that year, or maybe two of them run for captain. It might be a contest or it just might be a, a no contest. Might be one guy running unopposed. And then some young firefighter jumps in, or maybe two of them jump in to take that open lieutenant spot. And it becomes a pure 100% election. But, but and on election it, night, all the votes are made and the highest number gets the job. For a 12 month period, you have to get elected again? For a 12 month period. So how does that work? Because I'm going to ask you this. You know Wichita West, where I'm at. Okay. Got great, great, great chief. Ryan Fetzer is a great boss there. I love working for Ryan as my chief and everything else. You know, I'm a lieutenant and the train officer there. When they guys used to ask me, can I can I nominate you? Would you would you be willing to run for company officer? You know, I said I said no, because I'd be one and done. Because the first time I say, really, what were you thinking? I ain't vote for him no more. And it's like you have to me, some of the elections is like you have one month to be a lieutenant and eleven months to start campaigning for next year already. And it's hard to see a plan through when you're worried about getting reelected or not. And that is the weak spot. That's so the weak cha- spot. They changed it, and they, they changed it where the chiefs are elected alternating alternate years, and they appoint they the hand pick, officers. Yes. They pick their officers who they know will be loyal to them, and they know will work with them and be agreeable, well, they, and you won't have these you won't have these power And struggles. somebody said, well, what happens if they, they appoint like some shitbird or whatever? And I go, then you vote them out, because both of our chiefs, the assistant chief, are voted on and you know what? If you were, if I was so upset with, they have a really so-and-so, crummy lineup that's not effective, and they would change it. Right? You'd be, you know. And the other thing is, what chief would pick less than excellent people? Those are the people he's depending on to to ride the front seat and train the troops. But there are, well, I'm like getting there are some, there are a couple numbskulls oh, out there. So at least what what you have to remember are the power of the vote, power of the people. If you've asked them, look, this is the second year now. This guy is a horrible. Co- so, well, he's my buddy. Or he's, you know what? Then guess what? And that does. And exist. a bunch of us are going to get together next time when you're up for chief or assistant. We're not going to vote you in. So Ryan, but, make sure him and Michael, they make sure that they put the right people, the right positions. Right. You know, it, it's not a po- it's good people. And so, so there, I see some of that. But we've talked about there's like a hundred different ways to select your right. officers. How about the one? Where was the one? I'm sorry to interrupt, but the no, one. No, go ahead. Uh, what was it New Year's Eve? You weren't allowed. Oh to yeah, we heard about that guy down in the Washington D.C. area. You know, outside it was a volunteer fire department. They vote for the chief because I asked them at a seminar, how do how do you select officers here? Well, we vote for the chief, and whoever wins, he selects the whole lineup: his first assistant, his second assistant, the two captains, the three when lieutenants. When do you find out though? When you do know? you find out? Like like January first, <laughs> right? He goes in the night before New Year's Eve, and he takes the coats off the officers' rack. Puts them on the firefighter's rack, and he selects his people, and he hangs their helmet and their coat and their boots in the rack for the captain one, captain two, lieutenant one, lieutenant two, whatever, however they're labeled, however they're identified. You know. Now, what I wanted to make clear was some fire departments, the election strictly is an election. At the civil meeting of the company, on their monthly meeting, on their, let's say, October, November monthly meeting, December monthly meeting, they can nominate people for two meetings, right. and then the January meeting is where the election happens. Or maybe maybe they even have another night, a special night of the election, right? And somebody can be nominated at the last minute that night or not, and then the election goes through, and it's like a month later it becomes effective. Now, some places just do straight election. Other places do an election, but, 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 but you have to qualify, meaning if you want to run for an engine lieutenant, you have to have 501. You have to have engine company operations, you know, a state class right, in right. the state of New York, whatever state you have to be in. You have to have... Uh, leadership one, and you have to have uh, some other, some other class. What they are doesn't matter, but it's but it's known. It's written down in the bylaws. You want to run for engine? If you want to run for truck lieutenant, you have to have five hundred one ladder company operations, forcible entry, and whatever. But the this is a big fire service, and from coast to coast, and our friends in Canada and everything else, you know, because we we always said this: the only difference between the Canadian fire service and our fire service is a blurry line on a map. You right. know, we're the same family. But not everybody has some, there are some places that you've seen it where they don't have the ability to get that training. It's like, you know, John Salka, he's, he's, he's works for, for the city public works. He's reliable. He's a good guy. He runs this, 
And, I gotta tell you, and, I dealt and, with that. And you and you know what? We elect you as the captain or assistant chief, and you don't have any of those certifications. And I know guys that don't have the certifications on their volunteer fire department, and they're pretty freaking awesome, to be honest. And, you know? and how do you handle that? For those of you that are listening that uh that have been involved in the running or the managing of a volunteer fire department and, and, and maybe got involved in your election process, here's how some fire departments handle that. So you have these qualifications, and I and I dealt with this as chief. Uh, one year when one of the young members was looking to run for lieutenant. And then we looked at the record and said, wait a minute, you don't, you, you only have five out of one. You don't have anything else. How can we let you run? You know, cause there was a little uproar in the company about letting guys run. They had been letting guys run, even if they didn't have it, cause there was nobody else running. And you know, the, you know what they added to the bylaws? If you want to run for lieutenant, to truck this, lieutenant French and that, the captain is, you know, and, and, and it added, you know, each each rank. So if you wanted to run for captain, you had an engine operation, truck operations, force right. military, EVOC, and something else, leadership. And then at the bottom of each one of the qualifications sections in the bylaws, it said, or, just like they do for a lot of paid positions, or an accumulation of training and experience that is acceptable to the election board. And those are the people, the election well, committee. You know, so the election committee says, you know what? This guy only has five out of one. But this guy goes to FDIC every year. This guy writes articles for the local fire engine magazine. He's, in, he's into rigs. This guy also does a lot of training. He's our training officer. He's qualified. We're going to allow so him to that's similar that. to what you see with a lot of fire chiefs postings where they say, batches of this, matches this, EFO, EIO, all this different stuff. And, and I told you, one of the headhunters I worked for for years said, Rick, some of the best postings are the ones that say they want all this, and they end it with, and a combination of education and or experience shall be considered. Meaning right. they they got so much college, but they don't have this. They have so much. Some let's guy's got at, a bunch of stuff, but he didn't make the let's bachelor's. Look at the whole picture. Doesn't eliminate him. Let's look at the whole picture. And I went, you know, that's a good point. And and I like that for, for the volunteers. And it's a great that's postscript. A it's a great postscript after a, a nice list of qualifications. Let, let, let me tell you, the, the not the last, but another dramatically different way of selecting officers for a volunteer fight department. So I, I went to a seminar up in Connecticut and uh, Trumbull, I believe it was. And 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 and, and if I'm wrong, Trumbull, you should uh, call me or, or text me. Trumbull, Connecticut. And I was doing some hands-on training for them. And I arrived at the site. It was a street that was going to be knocked down to, to make them all bigger. And there was like five or six homes. A PD was using one. And so they, anyway, I got there early that morning. I drove up from home. And while I was sitting there, the rig started to pull up. Guys started to pull up. And they're in uniform. They're like in work dude uniforms. Patches and blue shirts and black work boots. And I'm like, I wonder who these guys are. And, and when the chief got there, he said, oh, oh, those are my guys. No, we're all volunteers, but we have worked through the uniforms and we're doing hands-on training and stuff like this. And I said, wow, it's pretty interesting. And it turns out that this place, and 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 and, and I hope I'm right. Well, I know I'm right about the process. I'm not sure who it was, but, I'm, but, I, but I put money on Trumbull. They actually, when they have an opening, so let's just say they have three lieutenants, two captains, and three chiefs. When a position opens up, a guy who's a lieutenant or a captain retires. Retires from his job at AT and T or at the city, and says, "You know what? My wife and I are moving to Florida. I'm going to resign my position as lieutenant in the fire department, volunteer firehouse." Thank you, sir. That is an opening. The chief makes an announcement on paper and on the on the on the fire department's website. There is an opening for lieutenant, engine lieutenant in this fire department. Uh, applications in the chief's office available any night on drill, and you know they're they're open for thirty days. Anybody interested? Let us know. Here's your qualifications. Here's what you have to have. This class, this class, this class. They come in, if they're qualified, they give them an application. Five guys fill out the application and send it in. It goes to the chief. He reviews them, makes sure they're complete. The three chiefs sit around and look at them and say, okay, these guys all look good. They qualify. Then they run some actual hands-on little stuff. Okay, we, they schedule each guy for a different Saturday to come in and run a crew doing a car fire, and they observe that and, and rate that and rank that. Uh, and, and they do a couple of other things. They do an interview with each guy, and there's a, a grade for that. And then all those grades get put together. And the chief looks at the guys that they think qualify, three of the five qualified, and then he selects the guy that he thinks will make the best lieutenant. Wow. And the guy has the job until he leaves or gets fired. There's no term. There's no second election. There's no election at all. Well, you know, in Jeff Bryant and Amboy, they do something similar. Where yep. It's almost like for, a job position. Just you get for a point consistency's in. sake, because I've said this, John, how do you see a, a plan through? I, I don't know how... You see a plan through when you're like, okay, I got to start thinking about getting reelected again. I got to back off these things because these guys. Because I want to, I don't want to piss anybody off. And I'm like, I, I, and I love it. And you know, we're both volunteers. We love being volunteers. Volunteer fire service has been the backbone of the fire service for forever, and always will be. But yeah. So there's, you know, so 
When I was chief of Sapleman Grove, two year term, only two years. You run once, you become chief. You run one more time. Your second year, done. Well, what is it now? Three? Now three, it's three? three. I finally, I tried to make it three my last time I was chief in 96, and it didn't get through. And finally, more recently, I, I got in there and said, let's make it three years. At least it's not your first year well, and your well, last year. You know? So there's a lot. There's, you know, you've got that process you talked about where you apply and all that. You have the other process where you have to have so many certifications. You have the process like Wichita West where the chief assistant chief go. Hand picks their own group. Pick. You got like Jeff Bryant and Amboy, how they do things. You know, you've got elections, you've got everything else. So there, there's, I guess, you know, because I've seen places that solely do elections and they, they have a good roster. They have, you know, I'm, I'm like, where, or I go, well, you know, at first I get nervous going, oh man. So every, you got to, and then you look at these guys and they go, no, we've got some good people. Once every 10 years, somebody gets in and we go, that's going to be a one term. And, and you know what else? It gives more people an opportunity to be an officer. I, I, I'm not a big fan of elections. But what elections does is it it keeps the ranks moving, and a guy with three years, four years, five years suddenly says, "You know what? I might run for election next time." And it's up in a year. Some places maybe every two years, rather than the place that has the appointment and you got it, and and you and you got the you know, the, you you're in and you're in until you leave. Now a guy could a guy could lament there. A guy could stay there for seven years as a firefighter without even an opportunity to be an officer because no ranks open up. So that slows down the promotion process a little bit. On the other hand, it gives the people in the ranks a little bit more seniority, a little bit more time so, to, to get their legs. So let's let's talk. We've been, we've been we've been going for a little bit here. Um, what recommendations do you have? You've done a lot of consulting for a lot of volunteer departments and a lot of career departments as well. What advice? So let's talk career side. Let's talk career side advice for those. Let's let's talk two ways. Advice for those seeking a promotion and advice to those who are running the selection process. Right. The selection process in big cities and, and most northern cities, certainly, but I'm sure some southern. Dictated uh, by civil service? Right. Dictated by an agency that's not even the fire department. They notify the fire department. we got a test coming up. Fire department says, oh, there's a test coming up. Uh, so so mostly I'm talking to folks that are, that are going to be in the system, they, that are going to try and get promoted. And, and my... My thought on that, my suggestion, my my advice is to get involved early. Number one, you should always be in the books anyway. If you're a firefighter, you should always – I remember seeing a deputy chief. I think I talked about him in class today. Sitting at his desk at 11 o'clock at night. I went up there for some reason for some paperwork, and there was a deputy sitting at his desk reading firefighting procedures. I was like, what are you chief? He said, oh, I always like to review this once in a while, make sure they didn't make any changes I'm not aware of. He said, I've been doing this for 35 years. I'm pretty good at it, but there's nothing wrong with looking at the books once in a while. And, and I agree with that for young guys, young officers, senior firefighters who might not even be thinking about studying. They might just want to keep driving that fire engine. Stay up with the books. Keep reading. Leaders are readers. We've always said that, whether it's That's monthly magazines or whether it's your fire department bulletins. That's an actual program, and I'm part of that program. Leaders Absolutely. are readers. Absolutely. So as far as, as far as paid people go, career departments, you know, it's not something you could just jump in at the last minute. And even if you're lucky with the seniority and you get on, you sort of – the unexpected officer. All of a sudden, six months later, after the tests are all marked, they start making guys. are like, "You're up, me? Yeah, well, I, I, but I've been I've been an eleven truck for thirteen years. Well, you're not gonna be eleven truck anymore. You're gonna be a lieutenant in six months. And suddenly, some guys are sort of cast into a position because they had a lucky Saturday. I hate using that term. They had a lucky Saturday, and the FDNY pretty much all our civil service tests occur on a Saturday. You know, and make a long story short, I think if guys get involved early and keep studying for the sake of being good firefighters, then when an exam comes up, they can just turn it up a couple of notches and start getting ready to answer questions. Check. you. Everything's highlighted. dog ear marked. Don't ever highlight anything the first time you read it. Yeah, That's yeah, my own technical yeah. advice. Don't highlight anything the first time you read it. But you know what I'm saying. You should, like I said earlier, you should be cracking the binder for the first time. And my, I agree exactly what you said. My only thing, and it goes along with that, is prepare to promote early in your career. Start early. Don't wait. Don't wait till the last minute. Don't wait. I think I'll give it a try. Secondly, don't I, these guys that say they did it just for the experience are, I think, kind of their fibbing. Use you. Oh, I didn't score. High. John, what, I, you know, I just did it for the experience. That's their way of saying, I know I didn't score high enough. If you're going to enter into promotional process, you go at it Do 100%. It. You Do don't it. go, well, really, you're going to waste your time just for the experience. You because know, you know what? You're not going to get anything towards the experience except taking the test. You're not going to gain nothing from it unless you, you give it 100% and you, At least you can say, you know what? 
I guess I'm not meant to be a lieutenant. Well, I've studied my butt or, off. Or that. you go, I gave it a hundred percent. I need to put more effort in here. Or what you know, at least you, uh, how do you even know how to get better if you haven't given it your all? In the so, FDMY, the study process, lieutenant captain, battalion chief is quite complex. There's a lot of material, there's a lot of study techniques, whether it's flashcards, guys listen to tapes, guys go to classes. There's a lot of different your, ways to get there. Give it your all. Bust your ass, yep. and that's the only way you're going to know. And one last thing is the volunteer thing, right? Again, there's a lot of there's a lot of options for the volunteer fire service to select officers, elect officers, etc. And I like the election process because it gives people a chance to move up, and it gives others a chance to move into the officer ranks that that might not if you just right. did appointments and people stayed there for years and years and years. However, I think an election process is null and void unless you have requirements attached to it. So if you want to have a lieutenant. You gotta have five out of one. You gotta have, you know, engine lieutenant. You gotta have an engine class, maybe an EVOC class, maybe or whatever. And then if you want to do truck, maybe something similar. You know, uh, five out of one. Maybe that EVOC emergency vehicle operations because you're supervising your, your chauffeurs, and then maybe truck operations and forcible entry. If you attach some classes, New York State has a gigantic state training program. Most states do that. You can go and attend those classes, and then if you add that 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 cover all at the end, or you know, an appropriate balance of experience and, and training. That that that's acceptable to the training committee or to the chiefs or whoever it is that's you know, running that process. Buddy, right? You know what? You need to sit down and look at your process, and make sure you're doing what's right. Some of you're going to go. You know what? We're dialing. It's working good. Some of you may go. Oh man, we need to call around. This ain't work or whatever. You know, if you keep putting the wrong people in the, in those positions, and it won't take you long to figure that out. You, if need, you, do that. you need to go back and look at your right. process. Right. So. Agreed. Agreed. All right. So if they want to get a hold of you, best email. Chief John Salka at gmail.com. And I'm Chief Lasky at gmail.com. We appreciate you tuning in for another one of our podcasts, The Command Post. Um, we have the third Wednesday of every month, our hump day hangouts with you, me, and Terry McGrath and, and Scott Thompson. And, you know, we try to have different guests, but sometimes and that's a live program. program. That's a live program, but you can catch it on uh, YouTube after that on Fire Engineering's page. Or you can tune in and ask a question, type in or call in. And we're happy to answer questions or discuss stuff as well. Absolutely, and you know, you know, if you're already at fireengineering.com. If you if you're listening to this show, take a look at the ribbon bar at the top. You've got fire engineering. You have gems for the EMS folks. You have fire apparatus. I mean, and the fire apparatus magazine isn't just fire apparatus. It's everything that goes into a firehouse. It's tools, equipment, exhaust systems, bunk rooms, furniture, extrication, everything that has to do with it. Firefighter Nation, FDIC, the list goes on and on. Our, our boss, David Rhodes, Chief Rhodes, is doing absolutely incredible. He and mm -hmm. Diane Rothschild and the whole cast is doing great. You're missing out if you don't tune in once in a while. If you don't sign up for the newsletter, it's free. There's so many things available to you on that website. Take a look. We end all of our shows, no matter what show we're doing, whether it's old school, it's the command post like we're doing here, or our hump day hangout with a very important statement, and that's please keep the men and women on our armed forces in your thoughts and prayers, and most importantly, never forgetting means just that, never forgetting. Thank you. God bless you. We will see you next time. Good night. Next time. Everybody up on this roof that they're all off the roof. I am on the roof of exposure four. Got fire through the roof of the fire area, the entire rear section. Now remember, give us a payday. A different account is for. Okay. Six one zero B. Now is the payday. Six one zero B. I'm out uh, here. We got a fire. One and a half story, single family dwelling. Fire shown from the second floor. Give me a second alarm on this. Hang up to the top floor. I got people hanging out the top floor windows with a baby. Commercial building. Uh, a lot of fire, a lot of smoke. Go ahead and strike a third alarm on my orders on this. We got people on the front fire escape here with windows centered below them. We need somebody up there. Yeah, let them know we got a job. I'm pulling up now. Second alarm, I got a one-story single-family frame. Heavy fire showing from the attic. So we use it all here. We got one line stretch, fire on the fourth floor. Second line being stretched. Primary switches are underway. The Fire Store, equipping protectors with passion. Every decision the Fire Store makes as a company is about its customers. As the holiday season has quickly approached, Explore a wide selection of unique and practical gifts at the Fire Store's Gift Center. Find the perfect presence for firefighters, EMTs, and first responders today. The Fire Store's goal is to get you the gear you need when you need it at prices you can afford. 
Visit thefirestore.com for everything but the truck and shop its family of brands, including Streamlight, MSA, Lion, Fleer, and more. Breathing in diesel exhaust fumes is like walking into a fire without a mask. Over time, those toxins lead to cancer. Protect yourself with MagnaGrip, the easiest, most reliable exhaust removal system that features a true 100% seal to eliminate diesel exhaust fumes. To get free grant assistance, visit MagnaGrip.com. IFSTA is dedicated to advancing firefighting techniques and safety through the creation of our manuals, instructor resources, and student study materials. Our high-quality, technically accurate, and affordable training content has made us a fire service leader. Visit us at IFSTA.org for more information.